Hey, yo, where Nick at? Back there in the cut. The shooting happened just before midnight at... Call the suspect they claim open fire. fire. When is a day going to come when we don't the have the yellow tape? And the big down to the south, 70 in Birmingham, but 63 in Alabaster and Tuscaloosa, 64 degrees in Aniston. Overnight, those temperatures will tend to equal out just a bit. In the Magic City, getting down to the upper 50s, obviously, there'll be places across the north that are considerably cooler than that, probably by as much as four or five degrees. I am Geneva Allen. I am Kool-Aid's mom. My pregnancy went so fast that uh, when I finally realized that Kool-Aid was here. My mom um, actually named him Kool-Aid. Um, at birth, he came out smiling. It was just like a ray of sunshine for him. He came out smiling, and my na my mom named him Kool-Aid. Um, and he's been called Kool-Aid ever since. And she said that that name is gonna follow him, and we will hear that name. And so far, that has been exactly what she stated. So we've been calling him Kool-Aid ever since birth. Big boy mask on now. Hey, can I get you to uh, pull to the best, first available parking around the building? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. She probably like what? You fool, buddy, boy. Uh, my experience growing up, from my from my point of view, was very tough. I remember. Uh, Growing up around things that I had no business growing up around, seeing things I had no business seeing around, being seeing at all. And uh, I mean, I never struggled in my life. I really say that I never really struggled or really wanted for nothing because my family did what they had to do to get me what I wanted. In middle school, um, I guess I could say summer, when it was time for him to get ready for summer practice, he's always been the type to um, lead. Um, middle school, he was a quarterback. So he was a quarterback from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And in eighth grade, he actually started as a, to play freshman ball for ninth grade. So he's been playing basketball and football since a young kid, and he's been a leader since then as well. So cool, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he wants to do, he can do it. Um, eighth grade, we sat down and made a plan. Once we realized that he that his situation needed to change as far as what he wanted to do in life, we made a plan. 
we said we got three years to get you to the 12th grade and what 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 do you want to do he had two options of a school to choose we chose Pinson, we moved to Pinson, and we've been moving every fourth. He told me that he wanted to play both sports, D1, in college. And when I tell you he's gotten over 25 offers, and he's been the most humblest young man that you will meet. Not only have he made sure that he gets what he needs, he makes sure his peers, his friends, he helps them get where they need to be as well. And he's just a blessing to not only me, but a lot of us. Um, I can't say I cry all the time, but it's joy. It's just so much joy. And not only has he led and been humble enough to guide himself and others, he helped me be a better person as well. He's been playing varsity since eighth grade. As um, soon as he went to, he left from Pinson summer right before the year that he was starting ninth grade. So summer practice. He started from Rudd to get ready for summer practice with Pinson Valley. Uh, freshman on varsity, I faced challenges like, well, I felt like I was supposed to uh, play more than I did, really. I mean, I felt like I deserved, I worked for, to play more, but I felt like at the same time, Coach Nix, uh, well, now, as I look at it now, I look back and feel, and I feel like Coach Nix was just humbling me and showing me, showing me something that, showing me something that I need to see, like, which is working, working to do something, working to get to where I need to go. And he actually paid off, and I thank him for that. Um, the, the time, the time that's put in. I mean, we come up here every day at 11 o'clock, and, and some days we don't leave to sit. So, when you want to play football, it's a lot of it's a lot of things come with it. Time is gonna come with it, but it's a good thing also. It keep you out the way, keep you out of trouble, keep you out of doing things that you don't need to be doing. Feels no threat. He's gonna roll more into the middle of the field. He's soft. There's just, I mean, they've always played us tight every half that we've ever played them. For some reason. They just fall apart, maybe because they don't have a lot of depth. But they are always within like five, six points of us every half for the past three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two years. Mm -hmm. um, in the summer, uh, for the most part, I probably um, wake up, eat breakfast, get a little stretch in, um, work out, DB drills, receiver drills, and catch the weight room. Get under it. Get under it. Mike, give me your spot. Mike, give me your spot. Boom. Me, 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 me. Yeah, I want to go to the block. Come on, go to the block, man. He want to go to the block. Mario Glizzy. Lil Fade. Mike Willis. Pelican looking at him. Well, Phils. Gerba looking. Gerba looking. Too many animals, bro. I mean, I just came up with that. Sophomore receiver right here, slot receiver. He committed to uh, UCLA right now. He said he want to stay down south, but right now he's going to Cadillac. <laughs> oh, yeah, got to go back to Mike. Three-star receiver right here, man. For Pinson, Alabama. <laughs> right now, he committed to, uh... He committed to... Oh, uh, Papa Turner, Nick. Let's go. My middle school experience, I had um, transferred to um, Fortendale in uh, my seventh grade year. Me and Kanaja um, and Cam, we was really like 
staying around the varsity a lot, learning the schemes and learning what they did. And then eighth grade year, all three of us was playing um, varsity football in the eighth grade. Uh, we always had a, a, a mentality to where we was the best and we was going to work to be the best at all times. So that was our mentality. Uh, I mean, because um, I know I know what guys do before they do it because of me playing both sides, I already know little, little things and li things like splits and depth and stuff like that. So it kind of helps me out by playing DB. Watch the bat, watch the bat. Hey. Oh. Oh. That's the best time you cover the burn anything. My name is Chris Davis. I'm from Birmingham. I play college ball at Auburn, and I coach the secondary at Pinson Valley High School. I actually used to hear about him growing up, how good of a basketball and football player he was like the last past couple years, but I never got the chance to really meet him. I didn't shook his hand a couple times, um, but uh, that's one of the reasons I took this job to get a chance to work with him. Um, um, it's, someone, it's a guy I can respect and listen to because he has been through everything that I'm going through now, which is playing in high school and playing at a high level in college and playing at the, the highest level you can play in football. So he's a guy I can respect and listen to and trust what he's telling me. Hey, Coach Dave! Hey, you got to get this, Nick. I'm wearing the hat to talk about the glasses in here. Ooh, cocaine ain't walked down on you. Um, 
really, um, it was like February um, 23rd. I had I had received a call from Coach Nick saying that he think Ole Miss was gonna offer me, and the next day they offered me. No, I, I didn't really go to no camps. I just played well enough on the um, field. Swim, <laughs> but I'm playing with them. You know. Man. We play a four minute game, bro. What time team means? I play with the same team though, and beat you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Hey Rob, where you at? Why you call me phone? Why answer? Why pick up? There you go, boy. My bad. Hey Rob, where you at? Why? Hey Rob, gonna get, you gonna get it done. Hey Rob, Mr. Daughter. Oh, he wanna play offense, but then quick. I ain't quick, bro. I gotta go get somebody. I'm gonna be late. What time do? It's gonna be another forty. Oh, I'm gonna be late going to get there. Get that ball back. Yeah. See, look, it be dragging me, bro. Uh uh. Ooh. 50! <laughs> they got a chain, bro. That, that boy is so tough, bro. Oh my god, that boy the best receiver in the league. Why, bro, so raw like that? Let me just go 50. Let me just go 50. Let's go. Well. On the practice, man. On the practice, man. Jojo. Yeah, twin. <laughs> Unblock and not go make a freaking tackle. All right, so if you out there and you unblocking, you ain't making tackle. I mean, it wasn't nothing new to me. I mean, I really ain't start training with people till I really got in, like, now, like, 11th grade, 11th grade summer. I mean, it wasn't nothing new to me. I always knew how to work on my own. I mean, it was something I preferred anyway. Man, you, your life is planned out. You on the schedule in college. Like, it is planned out what you do from the time you wake up almost until the time you go to sleep. Like, because, you know, in college you wake up, you might have practice or workouts in the morning. Then you might have to go to class. Then you got study hall. Then you got practice. So uh, you on the schedule down there. And that's, that's a good thing uh, about being young. You you on the schedule, so you don't really have too much free time to go off and do things on your own. Uh, you can always do something in your house. There's a lot of house workouts. I know, I know the young guys got YouTube channels and stuff like that. There's always something you can look up on YouTube, what to do, and you can go in your backyard and do it yourself until you perfect that. Man, in, in, in high school, I ate whatever I wanted. Um, in college, I had to pick up a little weight, but uh, once you get there, they, they, they have everything laid out for you, like meal prep, uh, you know, conditioning, workouts, um, just even muscle milk. I know that was a big thing for me when I got to college. I was on muscle milk. I eat McDonald's and drink a, a muscle milk. <laughs> so that was a big thing for me, but in the league, it's different because you, you don't work out as much as you do in college. Uh, and you work out on your own a lot, so you got to try to maintain and balance your diet more in the league than college. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because in college, when you're playing football and going to school, it's like you're working a full-time job. It's like it's a full-time job. Like I'm, you on a strict schedule. You can't be late. It's it's discipline. It's You'll get disciplined from being late. It's, it's, it's like, it's strict. And I think high school, college is way more harder than high school. The transition to the NFL. I, I went as an undrafted free agent. So, man, I had to work. No. <laughs> no.
Hey, what a um, what a band is that, bro? I love my name. That's not our problem. What do you do for us? Hello. What do you do for us? Hey, I got all this hair. All this hair out here and no rope bands. My rope bands is in my head. Don't I got one? Dang, I ain't seen him shit. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, Mike, why you ain't clean my shit today? Why you ain't clean my shit, bro? Ha 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 ha
we was like always in a competition, like playing against each other though. But in a couple years, like I say a couple more years later, we ended up teaming up. But we've been like, I say we've been family. Oh, it, was, it was hard. We had people around there getting money. It was drawers around. It wasn't no friendly environment. It was like, also the crime rate was real bad. Like, every other day, every other week, it's like, Murders, homicides, all types of stuff. Like, ain't no telling what you're gonna walk out of the house and see. Feel me? Like, it's crazy. This coach, uh, this this is my first year um, being the coach, a uh, coach. Period. This is my first year coaching, and uh, to come in right away and to coach a five-star cornerback. Uh, that's great, you know, to try to teach him some things he can learn and take with him to the next level. Oh man, I, I just used to hear about, man, he a, he a great athlete, freak of, freak of nature, uh, uh, on the field and on the basketball court, man. Uh, everywhere you go and you hear, hear somebody mention Kool-Aid name, they're gonna uh, give him high praises. So I think that speaks volume of him, what kind of kid he is and what kind of upbringing he has. See, I, when I did, I did the first game this senior. Uh, I sat out for like two, three weeks. I ain't played Mississippi State or LSU. We went down and lost. So I ain't rehabbing. You could have two little four games. What did you think you did? What I did? You want to do no kicks? For real? Yeah. That was the same year. That was my senior year. Oh, you did that on that? Bump, bro, I played the whole year and my rookie What was going through my mind, man, it was, it was a bad feeling because I. I feel like I let a lot of people down with not getting drafted. Like my family, like after the draft was over, my mom didn't know what to expect after that. She thought football was just over for me. So she didn't know how that whole free agent process worked, it, undrafted free agent process worked. It. But when I got to camp, I knew that in order for me to make the team that I had to make it in camp. Some people get it mixed up where they think they're gonna make the team in preseason. You make the team in camp. Preseason, you auditioning for 31 other teams. And that's what I did, man. I worked hard day in, day out. Tried to stay out the training room and just gave it everything I, I had. I thought you kid see the junior year then came back. Well, you know, I'm in love with that man, bro. That was my last game, bro. My last game at Auburn. You the kid since you stayed. Yeah, I, I'm talking about the medical career. That would have only been you to be able to take it. But it wouldn't have been no kicks. So, you know what I'm thinking? I done balled in camp. I'm thinking they could have cut me. They ain't got no reason. I heard a lap piece in game. It already been bothering me before. I know they could have cut me. They, don't, they ain't got no reason to keep me. I ain't get no phone call. Go back in the room. Head coach say, we don't need you on down the line. Get help. I missed the first four games that we have. I played the rest of the 12 games. Started one it starts your freshman year in high school. Uh, just for instance, with school, don't wait till you're a junior and senior and try to get caught up in, in your schoolwork. Take, as a freshman, when you come in, take the weight room seriously and take your schoolwork seriously and everything else to take care of yourself. I would tell the younger generation to make sure that you stretch and make sure that you're flexible in high school and make sure that you're doing your push-ups at night and stuff like that. That's probably something I would tell, I wish I would have told myself or someone would have really put in my life when I was a um, younger guy. Sacrifices already for not being, you feel me? Like, one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. I was all in. I was all in, you feel me? I'm telling you, I'm giving the fuck. I was the first one in my house, graduating from high school in my house. With my mom, my brother, my sister, you know what I'm saying? I'm the first one, including my mom. First one in my family graduated college. You know what I'm saying? I've been the first one. My auntie graduated though. Like, I, I know, I know you still a solid. I know. Huh? I know you still a solid. Sometimes you be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but you got it. I really, we really haven't talked too much about his upbringing, but he told me he was, uh, grew up like in a similar background that I grew up in. So uh, I know I can relate to him and get messages across to him to where he can understand it and understand where I'm coming from. What I went through and I know some things that I was facing or going through at home, I know 
they're facing the same thing. You got some guys don't talk about it, but you can see through it because I was once in that position. You know, um, if I feel like some need to be said or, or do I need to touch them and pull them out to the side and talk to them, that's something I do. My upbringing and his upbringing, like with this sports was different. See, I was good just in the city and my name was kind of well known in the state, but he's known nationally. And you know, I, I, my advice to him is don't let that go to his head. You know, just keep working from when he had one star, two stars, you know, just keep that same mentality and work, continue to work like he a three-star athlete rather than a five-star. What do you think now? We can never touch through that. He's way too, he's way, he's way too high profile. That D, um, that, that DB coach, all those people are dead tall. Yo, Jay, I, I like Jay, Jay real. Dead tall, man. Jay real, hey man, I thought you had a good day. Y'all just continue to, continue to work hard, man. I'm gonna put you, y'all be want me to put y'all on school. Y'all don't understand, I got a top three. Yeah, he can't no more. I can't put y'all on by, by, by five schools. But I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him for it. But y'all had, had a great day. We got a lot of reps, man. We got a lot of reps on both sides. Keep doing it. You right. <laughs> man, so crazy. <laughs> Let's go, break it up. Win the game, win the game, win the game. And it'll take him a lot of places. Use that ball to get to where you want to go. Brown ball. Hey man, Big Montana, you know. Big Montana right here, man. Big Montana, y'all. Yeah. Ryan Charles or Hemi, man. Tell about playing with. What you gonna do? No, I'm gonna go. See you that home. Whoa. Room. How many homies up? Okay. Oh God. And they froze. Can you go get me one of them right there before I leave? Nah, I'll be careful. My brother right there, man. We been, grew up together. Right here. Oh, these strawberries. I need strawberries. Straight. I like these right here. Daddy, come on, though. Take your time. My favorite, my favorite story, oh, it was it actually three of us with me, Cam, and Kool-Aid. Uh, we was all at my house. <laughs> we was all at my house, man. And uh, I think me and Cam, we was all outside. We was all outside. Then somehow me and Cam ended up in the house. Kool-Aid was out, outside, so we locked the door. His phone was in the house and everything, so we locked the door. So Kool-Aid get mad. He got mad. He get talking to us like he finna walk home, like. And he stayed like it wasn't no close walk neither. So if he would have struck out walking, he was gonna be walking for a minute. <laughs> that, was, that, was all, that, was, that was a funny story, that man. <laughs> Y'all be careful. Uh, well, schedules uh, at most um, schools are the same. I mean, they wake up early some mornings, some mornings they don't. And the class is around the same, so I feel like basically the schedule that we have in high school right now will be the same schedule that we would deal with in college. Different videos, so today we talking about dedication, and it's just like this. I'm gonna tell you just how it is. You know, I'm just thinking about it. You know, some things you don't want to say is gonna hurt some people's feelings. You know, I'm gonna show you just what you want. Do what you want right here. You just want, you just want UPS to come out at your door. Here go your package. Here go your blessing. The people that you working for these companies. Days on a week to work because they don't want to see your pill, they want to keep you right there. And it's 
To be honest, my routine and schedule was all over the place when I was in high school. I think uh, my freshman, I mean my senior year, we kind of got a little structure and uh, a guy in to run the program the right way by the name of Bruce Breeland. He did a great job with running the program. But other than that, like my freshman through junior year, it was kind of all over the place. We really didn't have no strength and conditioning program. So you had to lift weights on your own, find time, find time to do a lot of stuff on your own. Here, I think the schedule is good here. They get the kids like 11.30, 11.30 and have them for the rest of the day until practice in. I think as a high school head football coach, you can't ask for nothing better than that. So you can get everything, film, weightlifting, and all that in before five o'clock. Put Burn a Mac. Put Burn a Mac on that right there. Burn a Mac. I just want to be successful. Yeah. What they gonna do too? I'm gonna try to run that. I'm gonna come. He gonna come up. Burn. Don't, don't let me be like that, bitch. I'm gonna see it. Yeah, but man. I ain't gonna see it because they be running that corner route. You know, I gotta go out the corner route. Yeah, all right, bitch. Yeah, I gotta go out the corner route. Don't read and pull it, you need to dig it. You know what I mean? If the safety's still right there, you still gotta win. You understand what he's saying? You gotta come through your body to catch the ball. That's what you do with Joseph Bennett when he scored the last touchdown. Thank you, Coach Kool Aid. No problem, bro. Hey, coach, we gotta start walking, Bruce. Okay, all right. Let's go, guys. Show up by 3:30 today. Running hit mouth. That's all you do. Talk. I'm hoping he played in the JV game at Taco. Nobody. Oh God, I did. Oh God, pop buddy hit me off. Ten tackles on my come get me. Run the route. Run the route, John. Light me up, John. Go run the route. Light me up, John. Light me up. Come on, you got him. Come on, come on. All right. Chill out, Miller. Hey, John, better do it dirty. Give me your hand. Go. Oh, man. <laughs> Hurry up. Judge is ready out to dust him. Man, just go, bro. Yeah. Judge is ready to dust his man. <laughs> Look at him. I told you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> On the money, you say. Wide receiver, bro. <laughs> well, dude. He been running. He be running, bro. He be scared to go on me, bro. He been going on me, bro. Scared. Scared. Yeah, Quill. Hey, let me go get the ball. Okay, you my jet. We did run it in the game. <laughs> I gave him an old jersey. Nah, we ain't have a trainer. Our focus is our trainer. You feel me? Yeah, them, yeah. We'll do heel sprints. I say we do ladder drills. Yeah, push ups, sit ups. You feel me? Like, just, just grind, man, for real. Uh, how often would you guys work out? I say probably like four days a week, five days a week. Almost every day, for real. Go Green, y'all got ball back here today. Man, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, yo, talk to him. Ah. Oh, oh. Hi, dude. What a real thing is that? Man, He's shaking. There you go. There we go. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. There you go. Good job, good job, good job, good job. Next one up, next one up. Hey, don't drop the ball today. Hey, you drop the ball, I'm going to take off running. Uh, I talked to Judy a couple times. I mean, he just gave me advice to um, work hard and keep doing what I'm doing. Good. Hey, keep your feet in your circle. Yeah. Keep your feet in your circle. Right here. Yeah. No, Mike. Too short, Mike. Too short, Mike. You caught the ball five yards. Focus on it. We're going to drop it. It's a hard thing to see that. Here it is. Good. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Tilly, sold out crowds, man. Sold out deeps, man. Sold out day, air day, air Friday, sold out. We selling it out, man. He's got that it factor. 
You know, you hear a lot of coaches talking about that it factor. Like, he can, he this type of kid that can just turn it on on game day, whether it's offensively or defense. Approach to the game, his swag, his demeanor. You know, nowadays you can't play the game of football or, or basketball without any swag, especially at, at those positions he's played, like receiver, cornerback, punt return, and kickoff return. You got to have a little swagger to your game. I don't know. I guess it's just approach to the game. You got a one-star DB going to come in. He going to be hungry, um, you know, and try to take advantage of, of every opportunity. And that's why I said Kool-Aid, once he approached the game like a three-star DB and continue to work, and he'll continue to get better. Like, if you're not good at it, you got to – yes, if you're not good at it, you got to continue to work at it. But Kool-Aid got that it factor. Like, he he rarely get reps in on defense, like individual period where he can work his technique, and he'll go out on a Friday night and perfect that technique like he done worked it the whole week. Well, they, they need to see the, the lean and look. That's what they need to see. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. Turn it to the receiver. Drive it, boom. Hey, don't miss. Hey, you miss it. Let me get you a rock. Right. I'm gonna get him a rock. Huh? All right, hey, we gotta watch. Hey, we gotta work our combo stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Let's go. Hands and feet, stay on top. Yup, yup, yup. Stay on top, though. Oh! 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 Man, I think he, you know, I, I don't just want to point out one thing and say he needs to work on it, just continue to work on his entire package. You know, I tell him, like, tackling is going to be big on the next level. So if you're going to go to college to play, college, I mean, DB, you got to be willing to tackle. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I hope you have a great year. I hope you have a great game of Friday. Hope you sleep good tonight. I ain't touch it, but you back up in the game. I don't want to fight you, sir. Hey, bro, let me get my gloves back, bro. I just thought about it, bro. You ain't keeping them, bro. Man, I got my gloves on. Bro. I just thought about it, bro. Get away, get away. Get away. There. That's, that's like five, ten times on Already. Not that guy. Dang, you ripped them like that? They was holding. That's cute. They, I got triple team still scoring. Man, I ripped them with gloves, bro. I got them from Judy, bro. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry, Judy. He ripped them like yeah, that. Y'all hit him, me too? I ain't say nothing to him, though. He was dead. <laughs> that man, he ripped my Judy's, bro. Man, I ain't ripped that man. Get what? I got, they was doing me like they hold my hands and stuff. They ripped. It was already ripped. But it wasn't ripped like that, bro. But what you expect? Yeah. Look, I had bro, did like my, this. My gloves not I did like this, that. and then I had to realize it was messed up. Oh my God. I had to realize that's on me. This man that killed the gloves, you been oh, eating them? <laughs> this man, you might well keep them, man. I got some more, bro. No, nah, don't worry about them, bro. Keep them right there. No, bro. You them your gloves, bro. No, bro. I gave you them for the game Friday, for real. Exactly. Wham, keep them. You ripped them. Then he gonna try to give me the one that ain't ripped, because he know the other glove ripped good. Same thing. Take care of that ankle, man. Kool Aid, you too, man. Take care of yourself, man. Last day tomorrow, baby. Last day tomorrow, baby. We'll be ready. Oh, yeah, we'll be here. We'll be here. Hey, man, take care of what you got to take care of. Love you, boys. You need something, let me know. And y'all know the game plan. We at it. I don't know, though. It's tough. I gotta use her. I gotta use her. You can't I, I gotta use. Ooh. You can't rush it. Can't rush it. But that ain't the title though. It's like, <laughs> what y'all be doing, bro? Hey, Alan, hey, Nick about to pull up. Me and Nick about to pull up, man.
Oh, We're gonna talk. Alright. Uh, let me get a 10 piece wing only. My wing. Uh, the number seven. Number seven. The number seven. Mile. Number seven. Yes, ma'am. Mile wings and on the Philly, uh, just just meat and cheese and add mayo. Be a five, though. He play like a five. When it's all said and done? Yeah. I ain't never played again. Fun take. What's up, boy? I was like 205 when I came out. I get about 185 my freshman year. I'm straight. Straight. Tell me. Hey, you gonna, you gonna get it. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna work out every day. <laughs> you work out. You work out. Me here be two hundred. What? You boy, so little. He talking about. Man, so little, man. Man, I gained like. I gained like. Man, my dad too little. You, I'm, you ain't gonna get too much. It's gonna be. I get him to like one eighty. I think he'll get like one ninety. Yeah, he'll get like one ninety. That's solid though. I can move. Oh, ain't no moving though. This story where this, the, um, the um, program changed, where Coach Nix and his son, his sons came over here. We actually won a state championship two years in a row. Don't work for long. That eye formation ain't finna work for long, shot. None of it. Uh, it was nice playing with Bo Nix. I mean, he was he was a great guy. He was a great guy first. He was a great quarterback. He taught me a lot. We actually was on the same page with a lot of things that we did. Uh, he taught me basically like little things on like how to read coverage as coming from a quarterback point of view. So it really helped me with my game by running routes and stuff like that and knowing who should really get the ball and who should not get the ball and why they should not get the ball, stuff like that. Huh? I'm gonna come back and get you, I gotta do an interview. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, right, y'all. All right, what? Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. You pick whichever seat, no matter the name. It's a radio network. This interview here is brought to you by Drive Safe Alabama. They just want. I'm joined by JaQuincy McKinstry, better known as Kool Aid. And uh, you know, Kool Aid, I got to talk to you back in the spring, right after during basketball season. And uh, you know, obviously, y'all got right there in the Elite Eight in basketball, and obviously didn't finish that the way you wanted to. It's kind of similar to how football ended. And so, to kind of tell me how much motivation is that now giving you entering your senior year, getting as close as you got during your junior season, but not uh, getting I mean, season. freshman year we won state in football, but sophomore year we won state in football and basketball. So, but I was losing my um, my junior year in both sports. Um, it really it really showed me that you really have to work and nothing, nothing is given. So it really taught me a lesson to push and to take nobody lightly and to always give respect to your opponent. Ready for this season, you know, New coach, new staff, pretty much, and all. How different was it when y'all came back June eighth, trying to adjust to these guys while also, you know, trying to prepare for the season? Ready to grind. Everybody's ready to get to know each other and ready for all of that stage to get out the way so we can prepare for what's what's at best, what's ahead. What's different right now about this team, maybe compared to the team a season ago? Um, really, um, I always say the teams are basically the same. Um, heavy, heavy, heavy on senior leadership and um. Heavy on listening, like this team take listening a while. Like, I can tell another team made something, and he he listened to it. He don't not that, that he don't come back at me with nothing. He just listened to it. I mean, it's a way to approach everyone. So so you get you that help your team. What about for you? You know, obviously when you have as much recognition as you've gotten since you know around your sophomore year, you know you're you're obviously looked at as you know a leader anyways. But now you're that senior leader. So how different is your role from a leadership standpoint on this year's team, maybe compared to you know seasons in the past? I have to like show it. Like, I really have to do it. Like I really have to do it and be vocal at the same time. Last last few years, I'm a sophomore and grade year. I mean, I was a leader, but. I really just had to play football. I wasn't really, I had to really say much. I mean, I just really had to just go out there and play on Friday nights. But now I have to 
work every day during the week and show these guys what's the right thing to do. Kind of tell me where you're wanting to see the most improvement now here in the second half of the season heading into postseason where you go compete for a championship. Uh, I just want to see us um, really play for each other, like play for each other. Like even when coach make you mad or you feel some type of way about the situation, just always know you can look at one guy and feel like I'm playing for you. I'm, I'm playing for you, bro. If it ain't for nothing else, I'm playing for you. So just really playing as a team and playing for your brother. What's the biggest challenge now in having 10 games in 11 weeks to potentially go win a state championship? Um, the team who stays the most healthy will, healthy will win a state championship. You know, Monday and Tuesday hit, and you still don't really know what to expect when Friday rolls around. Yeah, you're right. Every day, every day is um, it's prisons. You gotta live every day. It's really showing you that every day counts. Cause even though like we practicing for today, there's no guarantee that we'll play tomorrow. There's no guarantee that we'll play next week. And, and with all the rules wise, like like I was saying, whichever team is more safe in the bubble, the win. Because if you have to forfeit, you basically forfeit two games. So if it's playoff time, you automatic out. Yeah. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate you taking time to sit down with me again, and uh, it was good to see you again. And Good luck to you guys the rest of the season. I look forward to seeing how this season turns out for you guys. Hopefully we'll be seeing you guys back in Bryan Denny State. Yes, sir. Thank you. No, I deal with it. I mean, it's something I'm used to. So, I mean, it just it just made me go harder. It show it, it made me go harder around my teammates because um, I don't want to be those guys who just got national attention but not really doing nothing. Or someone, they can just say, oh, well, he ain't do nothing. I want them to be able to say, well, he worked and he did this and that to get what he deserved. Day. This is a focus, this is a mental day. Not a lot of physical stuff, but it's a lock in. Watch the rest of the film. Take it home with you. <laughs> Kill Chris Cole. He wasn't here yesterday. He wasn't here yesterday, Coach. Thank you, in the team. He, he wasn't here. Hey, nobody brings cell phones at the end of the meeting. We're all out. Go ahead and put it on, uh, on mute. Thank you. My bad. Here we go, same game. Make sure we talk about how we're going to get this guy on the ground now. Make sure we talk about it. No phones to me. No phones. You're going to beat me, chat. Just running your mouth. What does that Pedialyte do? Hydrates. Centralites. Quick fluids. This tropical punch right here. I got it. My mama be giving me a different kind every week. I don't know if I'm really feeling this one though. I don't know if I'm really feeling this one. Do you drink it like every uh every Thursday I probably drink a whole one? And that'd be it. Probably drink a half one tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> When they follow you, you be like, oh, yeah. Man, that was a nice one. Go all the way up. Coach. Coach, see. I don't know where I got the phone from. Where you got that phone from? I was doing college ball, like, uh. Oh, oh, coach, you, oh, coach, you know, man. <laughs> These guys you can count on when they get thick, coach. These are singers you can count on. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. This, little things like this show you stuff. Show you stuff, coach. Go ahead and run on Friday, uh, Sunday, coach. He hurt. He ain't been around us. Better run on Sunday. <laughs> they got to spend a little time. Nah, that's Quail. That's Quail group. He in slacks. You see, me and Mike, we here. Outside receivers. They got to spend a little time with Sunday. They got to spend a little time with you. They got to spend a little time with you. On Sunday. On Sunday, yeah, 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 Sunday. Run against it. Please do me for that, boy. Get on the side of the house. Open it. You want to know it? You want to know it? Are you going to go for it? Ain't no way. No, ma'am.
man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 No, I ain't got hurt. Don't get me done. No, I ain't see Dorito. No, for real? Oh, Ken, I know you sick. Come on, dude. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Why are you talking to me like that, Ken? Like, for real, bro. Hold on. Y'all really don't, don't, don't start disrespecting me around here. Y'all better check my pedicle. Real talk. You better check my pedicle. You better check my pedicle. What is that? Check your name tag on the car. You don't care, man. You don't care. Oh, you broke your hand? Yeah, you broke your hand again. Again? Eat some beet tills and rice over and over, though. I can't eat no leftovers. Leftovers. <laughs> like soul food? I'm not eating that junk again. Like greens and stuff? <laughs> I can't eat no fried food left though. Like chicken? I think, I think, I think. That chicken da da is is old with. You can't even bite it no more. Pork chop? Nah, he dead. You can want some ribs up though. I might eat some more on the ribs in the oven though. Ribs in the oven. Microwave. No, I may put them back in that oven. Gotta put them back in that oven. Put them in that Luma four. We wearing our black jerseys tomorrow, Randy Cook. Just play, just play. Hey, you said Randy Cook was a hit. He said. Oh yeah, I was playing with Coach. I said, hey, Coach, what the hit is? What the hit is? He said, oh, by five, you want to stop? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cole, you so fun. I be knowing everything. You about to say, Cole, you so fun. You a comedian for real, Cole. I told you that. He be dead serious. He be dead serious. He be that plan. Oh, he dead serious. Eyebrow, boy. Move. No, I ain't got a button. That's it. Later. Well, we gonna be hungry, but we gonna be hungry, cause yeah, okay. to go play, to go play, go play. He said he will be hungry. To go, let's see you call, and we got to go play. Oh yeah, straight me. I get, I call my grandma. Everybody's piece of bread. No, I call my. I don't, I don't eat pizza though. I got, I just call my grandma, tell her make me some. Oh, man, to get you a to go play, man. You don't want no to go. You don't want no hotel. I'm gonna end up. I, I ain't gonna end up eating it, bro. She like, you're Quincy.
be so big. But you feel me, you got to get clean on the weekend. You got to get clean on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Just, just, just about, about two days. About two days. Yes, sir.
smell ad brands in a large peach lemonade. All on the same ticket, y'all? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to get a seven piece all the way at rich with a regular lemonade and fruit punch mix. And also a four piece with just hot sauce on it. Drink. From Con. With a fruit punch. Get in one salt and pepper. Yes, ma'am. You put salt and pepper. Yeah, the wing place that we just went to, they don't. They don't have a uh, mild flavor or they don't have like what you would go to. It basically sells just like regular chicken fried from home and you can put on it whatever you put on it. Like I just put uh, ketchup, hot sauce, and ranch all over my eye. And that's all for real. I mean, it's called Green Acres. I mean, a lot of people from Birmingham know exactly what it is and that it's a good place to eat at. you can't do um like I say he's gonna put in the work God's gonna lead him so the rest will follow I tell him all the time go the extra mile treat people like you want to be treated um help another young man help another young lady and he has he's not done yet but I am so grateful to be his mom a lot of people gonna get down on you 
and a lot of people are gonna stop believing it. And what you gotta do, you gotta prove them wrong. And in order to prove them wrong, you gotta go out and continue to get better at what you're doing or, or keep getting better at your craft. You know, you're gonna have doubters. Because I, I heard the saying, if, if, if you ain't got nobody hating on you, then that means you're not doing nothing. So if you got somebody hating on you, that means you're doing the right thing and just continue to do the right thing. Mm, that's a good question. Good advice, best good advice. You, you got me with that one. I done got a lot of good advice from a lot of people, I mean. Kool-Aid, the best advice somebody gave me, man, is use that football to get to where you want to go. Because that football will take you a long way. It will take you places you ain't never been, places you ain't never seen. Um, people get confused with me of not being like, um, being someone I'm not for real. I mean, I'm a, I'm a good kid. I don't do anything. I have no ambitions. No. Always look at the stars and um, keep your feet where they at. So basically, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get the big head. Always stay where you at. Don't think you're a star yet. Keep your feet where you at. Always handle what you can handle. Handle what's in front of you right now. Don't, don't try to look ahead.